our Wednesday junior acting class with a girl's life. What exactly are you looking for? I think I would do a better job of auditioning if I knew exactly what you were after. You know? Because I can do anything. I mean, not anything, but pretty close. Like if you wanted flirty and funny, I can do that. Or if you wanted me to be all mean and everything, I can do that too. <laughs> or if it's a really sad role, I cry just about every day. Not for any real reason, for practice. I practice crying, in case it comes in handy sometime. You never know when you might need to cry. I'll stand in front of my mirror at home and try to imagine my mom dying. <gasps> that usually doesn't work. <laughs> then I think about all those starving kids in Africa. That doesn't make me cry either. <laughs> and then I think about puppies, and they make me cry. Not like hurting the puppies or anything, just puppies. I hate puppies. They're always looking at you like, look at me, I'm so cute. Well, you're not cute. You're just a baby dog that doesn't automatically make you cute. And personally, I think puppies are stomachs. I mean, try to turn on the TV and not see a puppy stomach something. So I think about puppies. And then I cry. I can also burp on command. My dad is my best friend. And I get to see him every week. It starts on Monday after school at 3.45. I wait for him in the park across the street from my school. And he's never late, like other kids' parents. And we do something totally bohem together, like go bowling or for pizza. And I have to say, it is the best moment of my entire life because there's so much to talk about. And they're both hilarious. Like, every time I say I'm thirsty, he says I'm Friday, which is something between us, like father-daughter. And then we go down to his apartment, which is a downtown condo, where I have my own room, with a nameplate on the door that says Albert, as a joke. And so I say to him, Albert. I have lots of posters, no pets, I do my homework, and we just hang out. And then I go to sleep. And when I wake up on Tuesday morning, it is the worst day of my entire life. Because the beginning of a whole next week without seeing him. So I come down here before class to get control of myself. But Tuesdays are also sophisticated because my dad is from work before me. So I get about 20 minutes in his apartment all by myself, which is a very special time for me, which I like to think as team time. Like I drink juice, but I drink juice in a coffee mug. I look over the vast cityscape and listen to the top music of my time. It was the first ball game he'd ever come to. I had to remind my father of the game. I was afraid to show up and embarrass me. Ten years old and ashamed of my father. Ashamed of his dialect, his dirty overalls, his bruised fingers with fingernails lined with dirt, his teeth yellow as old ivory. Most of all, his lunch pail. That symbol of a working man. No. I wanted a doctor for a father, a lawyer, at least a fireman, not a carpenter. That wasn't good enough. I remember stepping up the bag. The game was tied. It was last in the ninth with no one at base. And then I saw him sitting along third base. He grinned and waved and gestured to the man beside him, but I pretended not to see, not to see him. I turned to face the pitcher, and angry at myself, I swung hard on the first pitch. There was a hollow crack, and the ball shot low over the shortstop head for a double. Our next batter bunted, and I made third. He was only a few feet away now, but I still refused to acknowledge him. Instead, I stared hard at the catcher, pretend concentration. And when the next pitch bounced between the catcher's legs and into home screen, I slid home to win the game. And there was my father, jumping up and down, showing his teeth all excited. And as the crowd broke up, and our team stamped out of the schoolyard, I looked back through the wire fence, and saw my father still sitting on the now empty bench, alone, slumped over a little, staring at the cinders between his feet, just staring. I don't know how long he stayed there, maybe till dark, but I do know he never came down to see me play. At home, that night, he never mentioned the game or being there. He just went to bed unusually, unusually early. Well, <coughs> here I am again. I can't say that I mind being in here. I suppose I'd rather be sick in the hospital than being sick at home. That may sound stupid, but it's true. At least when I'm in here, people, including myself, remember that I'm sick. 
When I'm sitting in this bed, I can pull school stress aside and concentrate on getting better. When I'm at home, I just want to be normal, but I can't. I'm supposed to lay low for a while. The only thing is, I can never sleep in this place. Instead, I lie awake. I listen for different sounds, IV beeps, children crying, distant TVs, and laughter in the halls. I feel selfish falling asleep thinking of me all the time. And so, my thoughts off turn wonders to the kids around me. Their problem seems so much greater than mine. Thinking about their problem almost makes my disease seem minor. But I try to think of positive things. I hope someday I have the skills to help other sick children. But I just can't deal with what I can't make them better. Dad always says, life's not fair. But even dads can be wrong, and I plan on proving it. It's about time someone fixed all these problems so that no one has, no one has to deal with this junk again. I think I'll have to do just that, eventually. For now, here I am, awake, alone, thinking and listening. Well, at least I'm getting some quality thinking time. When I was 10 years old, I got cast in the school play. We were doing this play our teacher wrote about Winnie the Pooh. I was Tigger, probably because I'm really hyper. I was so excited every day. I'd stay at school and I'd learn my lines in the first week. And every night at home, I'd sing my song about Tigger. And I felt good. I mean, I felt amazing. It was like my whole life, I was looking for something I was good at. I couldn't run fast, I wasn't good at math, I couldn't even spell. But when I sang that Tigger song, I was proud. So the day of the show came, and I was backstage in my Tigger costume. And I was really nervous, I had to pee like every five minutes. <laughs> and then I went out there, on the stage. And the lights were really bright. I could see the outline of the heads out there. And then I did my song, and I just put everything I had into it. And after, the whole audience applauded for me. <laughs> for me! I've never been applauded for anything in my whole life. And then all the parents were coming up and hugging their kids. And I looked around for my mom, and I kept looking. And I was still there in that Tigger costume. And I asked her later why she didn't come to my show, and she said, what show?